Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The iconic delta wing silhouette of the Concorde and the roar of Olympus engines, pinning passengers to their seats at takeoff, gave a glimpse into the future. The Concorde, the pinnacle of supersonic transportation, flew its first commercial mission in 1976, heralding a breakthrough in supersonic air travel. For some, flying the Concorde was a badge of honor, while others favored the impressive time economy of crossing the Atlantic in less than four hours. While supersonic air travel seemed to be the future of aviation, the extreme noise and the gas-guzzling engines contributed extensively to the retirement of the Concorde in 2003, marking the finale of the supersonic era. Despite the retirement of the Concorde, its legacy soared, attesting to human aspiration for high-speed flights. The Boom XB-1, the world's first independently developed supersonic, was hailed as an heir to the Concorde to revive supersonic air travel. Boom XB-1, or Baby Boom, is a one-third scale demonstrator aircraft. In 2022, it laid the stepping stone in flight testing by conducting low-speed taxi tests. This was followed by medium-speed and high-speed taxi tests that accelerated the aircraft to a speed of 140 knots on a runway, nearing the takeoff speed. Following a series of fruitful taxi tests, the baby boom soared into the skies, embarking on its next phase of testing. Three General Electric J85 turbojet engines power the aircraft, which deliver a combined thrust of 12,300 pounds. The supersonic inlets are designed to decelerate the supersonic airflow to subsonic speeds for optimal efficiency across all operating regiments. The successful completion of the first test flight this spring that took off from the Mojave Air and Spaceports bodes well for the forthcoming overture the real breakthrough in future supersonic air travel. Living up to its name, the Overture will be the trailblazer of modern supersonic air travel. Boom is expected to roll out the jet in 2026 and introduce it to service by 2029. While aircraft like the X-1B and Overture are pioneering a resurgence in supersonic air transport, the U.S. Air Force has been flying supersonic since the 1950s. Out of all the supersonic aircraft in the U.S. Air Force, the SR-71 Blackbird is definitely a standout. Despite its futuristic look, its unmatched capability to cruise at Mach 3.2 and fly to altitudes exceeding 85,000 feet was truly remarkable. Music 
This made the SR-71 the perfect aircraft for reconnaissance missions. Due to the extreme speed, certain parts of the aircraft were scalding at temperatures around 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. To handle thermal expansion, the aircraft's structure was made from 95% titanium due to its low thermal expansion coefficient. The SR-71 was powered by two Pratt & Whitney J-58 engines. These hybrid engines combine features of turbojet and ramjet engines. At speeds below Mach 2, the engine operates like a conventional jet engine. While many startup companies are venturing into high-speed air travel, Hermius is an Atlanta-based aerospace and defense company that tops the list with promising aircraft designs. Halcyon, Quarter Horse, and Dark Horse are the three aircraft designed by Hermius. Halcyon is intended to revolutionize commercial air travel by chopping flight times five-fold compared to conventional airlines. The other product, Quarter Horse, will serve as a testbed for developing high-speed aircraft and testing their in-house engine, Chimera. Dark Horse is Hermius's unmanned hypersonic vehicle focused on defense and national security applications. For larger thrust, the same principle is exercised, but this time with a much larger and more powerful Pratt & Whitney F-100 engine. This is Chimera 2. Unlike conventional and certain supersonic aircraft, a typical turbojet engine does not work at hypersonic speeds. Ramjet engines are widely adopted for hypersonic applications where they cannot generate thrust at low speeds. Disqualifying a pure ramjet engine for a hypersonic aircraft that takes off and lands on a usual runway. Hermius designed their own engine, the Chimera, which operates as a turbojet at lower speeds and bypasses the airflow at higher speeds converting the same turbojet to a ramjet. As they claimed, this is the world's first commercially developed turbine-based combined cycle TBCC engine. Testing a turbine-based combined cycle engine is challenging. Operating through various modes and transitioning from turbojet to ramjet mode is crucial to verifying the safe operation of a TBCC engine. During the testing, an air plant is used to simulate flight conditions by creating airflow. With all these tests and applications, 
it is evident that new engine types are about to make their entry into the industry. Out of all, electric hybrid and all electric engines are at the forefront. All electric engines are gaining more traction nowadays in low range applications. On the other hand, hybrid electric engines are also used in low to mid range applications. They are based on turbo generator technology, which uses a turbo generator to charge the batteries during the cruise. The turbo generator incorporates a power dense turbine intended to run on sustainable aviation fuels to keep emissions to a minimum. Concerns about aviation's environmental impact have expedited aviation's electrification. The growing trend is backed by pressure on the industry to implement environmentally friendly alternatives. In addition, the introduction of advanced batteries and effective cooling systems has cleared the way for the rapid electrification of the industry. When compared with conventional jets, all electric aircraft are nearly 20% silent and emit 80% fewer greenhouse gases. On top of that, operating costs and pilot training cost 70% less for all electric carriers. A real-world example of a game-changing all-electric aircraft is Beta Technologies Alia 250. The aircraft is fitted with an electric propulsion system that allows it to take off and land like a conventional aircraft with the help of its pusher propeller. With the ease of point-to-point -point operation, the U.S. Air Force expects to use eVTOL aircraft mainly for search and rescue missions, medical evacuations, and humanitarian missions. Apart from the military applications, the Alia 250 is brimming with all the qualifying characteristics to play a key role in advanced mobility air missions. First electric cargo aircraft. <laughs> As per Beta Technologies, the versatility inherited due to its unique propulsion system allows the aircraft to operate in a multitude of modes. From the right flyer to the most modern airplane, engines remain the backbone of every successful flight. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.